This is section 4.1, part B, right triangle trigonometry. The angle between the line of sight and the horizontal when an observer is looking upward is called the angle of elevation. So if we have a person standing down here and they are looking up at something higher, then the angle in which they are looking up is called the angle of elevation. If a person is standing up high and they are looking at something down below, the angle in which they are looking from a horizontal down to that point is called the angle of depression. But since we know the, this angle is perpendicular to the height of where the person is standing, we know that these two sides are parallel. And because the sides are parallel, the angle of depression and the angle of elevation are alternate interior angles. And from geometry, we do know that alternate interior angles are congruent. So we do know that the angle of depression and the angle of elevation will be congruent. So if we're talking about a problem with angle of depression, which is actually located outside the triangle, we can move that angle measure down to where the angle of elevation would be located so we can use our right triangle trig to solve the problem. So a ground crew worker who is six feet tall is directing a plane on a runway. If the airplane is 150 feet off the ground and the worker sights the plane at an angle of elevation of 32 degrees, what is the horizontal distance from the worker to the plane? So when you're solving these, the first thing you want to do is to draw yourself a picture. So we have a worker who is six feet tall and they are looking up at a plane and the plane itself, which is up here, is 150 feet up. They are looking up at that plane. But our right triangle is created right here. It's not going to be the total 150 feet because their eyes are 6 feet off the ground. So if the total height's 150, and the person is six feet off the ground, the length of this side of our right triangle is actually only 144 feet. Now they tell us that the observer is looking up at a 32 degree angle, and we want to find the horizontal distance, which is this side right here, of how far the person is away from the plane. Now once you have your picture drawn and labeled, now we need to decide what sides we have on our triangle. So remember the side that's across from the angle is called the opposite side. The side between the angle and the 90 is called the adjacent side. So in this case, opposite and adjacent, that tells us we need to use the tangent function, which is opposite over adjacent. So if we fill in the information that we know, we know that our angle is 32 degrees, we know our opposite side is 144 degrees, and we know that our adjacent side is what is missing. Right now the x is in the denominator, so we can multiply both sides by x to get rid of the denominator. So we have x times the tangent of 32 degrees is equal to 144, but we still need to get that x by itself. Right now it's x times the tangent, and opposite of multiply is divide, so we can divide both sides by the tangent of 32. Since they didn't tell us how they want us to round this, if we're dealing with a length, we can round to one decimal place. And if we're dealing with an angle, we would round to the nearest whole number. So if we round to one decimal place, this would give us 230.4 feet.
A hot air balloon that is moving above a neighborhood has an angle of depression of 28 degrees to one house and an angle of 52 degrees to another house down the street. If the height of the air balloon is 650 feet, estimate the distance between the two houses. So remember, if we are dealing with an angle of depression, we know that this angle and this angle will be the same because they are alternate interior angles. And we know that this angle and this angle will be the same because again, they are alternate interior angles. So if we look at this triangle here, on the green triangle, we know the side across from the angle is called the opposite. The side between the angle and the 90 is called the adjacent. So opposite and adjacent, we're going to use tangent. And we can use tangent to solve for how far horizontally the air balloon is from that house. So we know the tangent of 52 degrees is equal to 650 over x. Now again, the x is in the denominator, so we can multiply both sides by x to cancel that denominator out. So we're going to have x times the tangent of 52 degrees is equal to 650. But we still need to get that x by itself. Right now it's x times tangent, so the opposite of multiply is divide. And when we solve that, we are going to get that x is equal to 507.8 feet. So we know the distance horizontally from where the air, hot air balloon is to that house is 507.8 feet. Now, if we look at how far the hot air balloon is, is from the house that's farther away, or we look at this red triangle, the distance from the hot air balloon to this other house that's farther away has a distance away of y. Now again, we have this angle. We know this side is the opposite side. We know the side between the angle and the 90 is the adjacent. So we are going to have to solve a tangent function problem again. So tangent is still opposite over adjacent, we know our angle this time is 28 degrees. Our opposite side is 650 feet, and our adjacent side is our y. This is what we're solving for. To get the y out of the denominator, we're first going to multiply both sides by y so that our denominator cancels, and we're going to have y times the tangent of 28 degrees is equal to 650 feet. To get the y by itself, right now we have multiplication, so we need to do the opposite. So we're going to divide both sides by the tangent of 28. And we're going to be left with that y is equal to 650 over the tangent of 28. Or y has a length of 1,222.5 feet. So if we know the whole distance across from the hot air balloon to the farthest house is 1,222.5 feet, and we know the distance from the hot air balloon to the first house is 507.8 feet, we need to find the distance between the two houses. To do that, we can subtract those distances. So we can do 1,222.5 minus that 507.8 feet, and we'll learn that the distance between those two houses is 714.7 feet. 
Now it is possible that a question can tell you to solve a triangle. If you need to solve a triangle, that, needs, that means you need to find the measures of all the angles and all the sides of the triangle that are not already given to you. So let's solve this triangle. Right now, let's see what we know. We know this angle. We know that the side across from that angle is called the opposite. The side between the angle and the 90 is the adjacent. And across from the 90 is the hypotenuse. So if we want to solve for this opposite side first, we have opposite and adjacent, so that would be tangent. So we know that the tangent of 35 degrees is equal to our opposite side over our adjacent side. To get that x by itself, we are going to multiply both sides by 10. And we're going to get the x is equal to 10 times the tangent of 35 degrees, or x is equal to 7. From here, you do know two sides of a right triangle. So if you wanted, you could do Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is always the hypotenuse to solve for the z, or we can do some more trig. Since this is our trig chapter, I'm gonna go ahead and solve this with trig to show some more practice. So this time, if we're solving for the hypotenuse, we know the adjacent, we're looking for the hypotenuse. We can use cosine. So our adjacent side, we know that cosine of 35 degrees is equal to our adjacent over our hypotenuse. First, we need to get that z out of the denominator, so we can multiply both sides by z. Now we have z times the cosine of 35. The opposite of multiply is divide. So we can divide both sides by the cosine of 35 degrees. So z is equal to 10 over the cosine of 35 or z is equal to 8.7. Let's recheck that because it should not be, there we go, cosine, sorry, did the calculation wrong. The cosine in this case tells us that z is gonna equal 12.2. Now, the reason I knew instantly that I typed something into my calculator wrong is remember when you place it over here, the hypotenuse should always be the longest side. So when I got 8.7, when I went to put it on my triangle, I instantly knew I had something wrong because the hypotenuse would not have been longer than the adjacent side. Now we're not done solving this triangle yet because we still don't know the measure of this angle over here. Now remember, in a triangle, you have 180 degrees. We've already used 90 and we've already used 35. So if we take that 180 degrees, subtract 90 and subtract 35, that means we're gonna be left with 55 degrees for this angle. So we know that the measure of angle Y is 55 degrees, we know side x is 7, and we know side z is 12.2. This time when we go to solve the triangle, we know two sides, but we don't know any angles. So if you would like, we can start this one by finding that third side using Pythagorean theorem. Remember, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared where C has to be the side that's across from the 90. To get the K by itself, we are going to take the square root of both sides, and we will end up with K is approximately 13.5.
Now this should make sense because that is the longest side of the triangle. But now we need to find angles. So if we look for angle L, angle L is across from the 8, so the 8 would be our opposite side. The 11 is between the L and the 90, so this would be our adjacent side. So if we're looking for angle L, we can use the tangent function. And remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we are looking for angle L. We know our opposite side is 8. We know our adjacent side is 11. Remember, when you're looking for an angle, to take the tangent, just the tangent to the other side, you have to use the inverse. And if we do the inverse tangent of 8 over 11, we're going to get L is approximately 36 degrees. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to find angle J. Again, remember in a triangle we have 180 degrees. We've already used 90 for angle K. We've already used 36 for angle L. So that'll leave us with 54 degrees as the measure of angle J.